say it. You are our shepherd. We shall not want. We will not lack any good thing. Father, we declare your word, your prosperity, your blessing, and we ask you for increase in every realm of our life while being satisfied and thanking you for today. Lord, we've got a roof over our head. We've got electricity. got good old heat coming out of the vents. Lord, we thank you for it. We're blessed. And we ask you for increase so that we can rejoice and give to others. And we thank you that it's done. We receive it. When we pray in Jesus' name, and everybody say it. Amen. 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 Give the Lord a hand. Right? There's 220 in the hymn book. Okay. It's the love of God. Amen. But the last verse, the man that wrote the, the song found this. One verse right here says, Could we with ink the ocean fill where the skies of parchment made, where every stalk on earth a quill and every man a scribe by trade? To write the love of God above would drain the ocean dry. Nor could the scroll contain the whole, though stretched from sky to the sky. And it was said, the last stanza of this song was penciled on the walls of a narrow asylum by a man said to have been the minute the profound lines were discovered after his death. Wow. Like you said, that woman was taken out because she started speaking in tongues and prophesying in the Congress. We need to know that we can be that same way. And that this man here, I don't believe he was insane. I believe he was as sane as we are. But the world looked at us as the peculiar people we're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Back in those and days, they took, took them and put them away because they thought we were crazy. Amen. Even religion, back in those days, if you didn't believe the way the certain denomination did, they'd take you to the Inquisition and uh, basically kill you, to crucify you. I mean, they would literally crucify you like they did Jesus. They'd boil you in oil. They would uh, fry you. I mean, literally put you on a spit, a human barbecue. If you get, if you got excited, if you get into the spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ, and it didn't fit their mold, that's what I call religion. Religion killed Jesus. We don't want it to kill us today. I tell you what, God have mercy on those people that took that spirit-filled woman and put her in that place. Praise God. She said she's going to obey God rather than man. I guarantee you in her heart, she just had to speak. I pray that if I'm put in that position, that I would do the same thing, obey God. Now like we teach and like we believe, we're not going to go into some church that doesn't believe uh, in speaking in tongues and just start throwing tongues around. I'm not going to do that. I don't think we should. But if the Holy Ghost moved on me and I knew it was time to do it, i got to obey God rather than man or religion or denomination, mine or anybody else. I want to be free in Jesus. So we definitely want to pray for this woman. I, uh, we want to, I've got several prayer requests, so we'll go ahead and take those now. And then I want to share a little from the Word. Uh, actually, a lot from the Word. But it's, it's, a, it's two verses. The text is two verses out of Ezekiel. You can turn there if you want to. Ezekiel chapter 46, verses 9 and 10. I've never preached out of this exact text before, so praise the Lord. I was asking the Lord for a word, and that's where He led me. And then he gave me some thoughts. He dropped some things in my spirit. See, I didn't go to college. I went to college, but I didn't go to college to learn how to preach. I don't think nobody knows how to preach except for the Holy Ghost and, and Jesus Christ. If we follow him, then he'll preach or speak through us. I believe that. Amen? Okay. We want to pray for Roddy Nelson. Let's remember. And I talked to Pastor Teresa. She said, hello, everybody. She really misses us. She's glad that she is where that she is. But she sure misses her church in Tennessee. Sends her love to you. And uh, we want to believe God to touch Roddy. He needs a miracle. If he doesn't have a miracle, he's going to die. That's the bottom line. But you know something? We've got a miracle working God. Amen. And I declare, he will not die. But he shall be healed and declare the glory of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. I declare it in the name of Jesus. Christina, I don't know her last name. Jerry McCain, he's a fellow missionary. He lived in Haiti for five years. He's from Asheville, North Carolina. 
Good brother taught me a lot about missions. He, uh, his granddaughter, if she doesn't have a miracle in her liver, in the natural, the natural report says she's going to die within a few weeks. She's 27 years old, 27, 28, 29. Way too young. Way too young. Amen. The Bible said he wants to live life long, strong and long, of course, in the will of God. We pray God touch her spirit, her soul, and her body. Amen. You know, God's will is not always done. We have an enemy. That's why we're here. To submit to God and resist the devil. Amen. Sometimes people's lives are in our hands. If we don't pray, nothing will happen. Sometimes if we pray, life will be given, bodies will be healed, souls will be saved. The whole world is not on us, but somebody, some people, somewhere, their lives are in their hands. But you know what? We're not going to be guilty for not praying. Amen? We're going to call upon God. If nothing else is done... We want to be called a house of prayer. That's what Jesus said. His church, his house should be called a house of prayer. That means to communicate with God. First and foremost. Amen. We want to touch God and intercede and pray for people. So, Rodney Nelson, Christina, they shall live. And we'll yeah. pray for Mamma Nadine. Uh, she had a flu shot. She just had a lot of trouble. And uh, she just says, pray for me. Her, Lord, touch her. Amen. Amen. Uh, the, and the spirit of fear. You know, it's a real thing. It, That's right. We all want to live. I mean, I've had my heart hurt me. The devil tell me, you're having a heart attack. You're going to go. Are you ready? <laughs> Say, Amen, I'm ready. But I ain't going to take up no buses unless the Lord calls. Right. Amen. I ain't going to push no tickets. Now, if the Lord does it, so be it. Right. But I believe that he can let us know. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, all three, gathered their family around them because they knew it was time to go. They fulfilled their race, fulfilled their course. I believe that's the perfect will of God. Now, I don't feel sorry for anybody in heaven, amen? amen. Praise God. God wants to take me at any time. Uh, Great words I think to death, words I sting, the Lord's already taken it, amen? amen? The people, we've got a lot of work to do. We've got other people needs to know Jesus Christ, Amen? So we pray for long life. Okay, we want to pray for Angie Greer. Miss Carol, what's the report from the doctor? Now, we're going to believe the report of the Lord, but I believe we need to tell the report of the doctor to know how to pray, amen. Well, she has to have a colonoscopy, and then another then they'll thing. Then they'll tell the final test. And another thing is, her blood was a little bit low, but okay. that wasn't no big deal, but... So she needs uh, her blood to be uh, strengthened, yeah, amen, and she's probably iron or something like that. A little bit of her stomach. But she's home now. Yeah. Okay, all right. And so she's having some stomach problems and some digestive problems. That's, you know, uh, and so we know that Dr. Jesus knows all about it before the tests and doctors run. Praise God for doctors. Nurses and any kind of healing that there is. Amen. It ain't the devil building these hospitals and trying to get people well. Right. Yes, I know there's good and bad doctors as well as there's good and bad preachers and good and bad policemen and good and bad politicians. Although the latter there, I think there's more bad than there is good. <laughs> That's why I'm praying, Lord, get them right or move them out. Amen. Get back to the foundation we were built on, the Word of God. Well, before I start preaching, we want to finish all our prayer with Bonnie, we're coming against cancer. Again, that's a name, it's not a sentence. Right. We're going to rebuke it. Right. We want to pray for Charlotte Kastner. Lord, touch her. I don't think God's through with her yet. I believe God wants to raise her up and bless her. She sings and worships the Lord. She's got an anointing to minister in song and testimony and even in the Word. I mean, she has just... Obey the Lord in your call, whatever that it is. Everybody's not called to preach from the pulpit. Right. You know, we can't. Everybody can't get up and uh, preach in the pulpit. But we all have a calling. Amen. Amen. We have a calling. Hallelujah. Uh, do we have any more prayer requests? I want to put the word Bitcoin on here. I looked up Bitcoin. You say, what's that got to do with anything? <laughs> well, it's a type of currency that they're trying to come out with. They've already got it in some leading 
Uh, they call them financiers or, or, or uh, uh, accountants of whole countries. Not the governments. And some of the governments get in on it, but big time people. It's one world currency. I'm not saying it is it, but it's a leadership into it. We see the last of the last days, I believe. You say, well, I've heard that all my life. What is your life, Buddha? I mean, it's quick. Right. Yeah, they're using it. They're going to have to start using it. Well, we know this. You know, I, I'm not so much interested in the particulars as I am seeing what's happening. It is coming to a one world government, one world currency, and you've got to have a mark to buy or sell. It's coming, right? But thank God, we who are born again, saved by the blood of Jesus, not by church attendance or water baptism or how many stars you've got for doing this or that. But being born again, that's what Jesus said, and I'm banking on the words read. Amen? Yes. Amen. That's the mark of God. Yes. It's the mark of the Holy Ghost in your heart. And the devil can't cross it or he'd be a saved devil. Amen? Amen. And you know what? And I, I come to this conclusion. I've got to trust God's ability to lead me more than my ability to follow Him. Once He knows we've given our heart to Him, we know that He knows we've given our heart to Him, right? And that we're trying to do what's right according to Him. You know what? It's impossible for us to miss God. Now, I didn't say we wouldn't make mistakes, but it's impossible for us to go to hell. It's impossible for the devil to rule our lives as long as we are trying to do it. Now, there's the kicker, is it not? Yes. Church attendance is really big. I'm going to actually preach a little bit about that here in a few minutes, but we want to... It's pretty cool the Lord mixing the prayer requests with the message, and uh, uh, that's what He's speaking to us today. I, I want to be covered and secure I want my insurance paid up. Amen. Insurance paid up for what hell is going to be released on this earth. Because it's coming. Now, we don't, but we don't have to be afraid. The spirit of fear. We're going to rebuke that. Uh, my mom, Nadine, my mom, she was, uh, she does real good. Then fear will try to grip her. And then I say, ma'am, that's the devil. Now, don't get me wrong. We need to check things out. We need doctors and this and that. But don't let the spirit of fear rule us. Right. Amen? Because the devil cannot cross that bloodline spiritually and physically if we'll stand on it, speak it, believe it. Amen? Right. I believe Jesus walks with us in every realm if we'll just stay with him. You say, well, uh, what if I miss it? I don't know what to do in every single thing. You see, it's hard obedience. It's the state of being. It's not, we're not human doings, we're human beings. Christ is in us. It's His presence that makes us right. It's His presence, amen, that will lead us. In other words, we will walk in love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, and meekness, and temperance, the fruit of the Spirit. That's, we will walk in those. And we will walk in even repentance. In other words, if you make a mistake, praise God, we can repent. The blood said it cleanses uh, King James F of all of our sins. That means it's a continual process. And the only thing that would stop it is if we totally make a decision to walk away from Jesus. And that's hard to do. It's impossible to do if you don't want to. That's what's beautiful. And who wants out of this? I don't want out of it. I believe we can trust Jesus with our life. And the devil cannot destroy us. I don't even believe a nuclear bomb can destroy us if Christ is working in our lives. Amen? The children of Israel, God took care of them in Egypt. And, and, and in the land of Goshen, and all hell was breaking loose on the Egyptians, that's, that's like Old Testament, vernacular speaking type of Christians in the world. Egypt is always a type of the world, and the children of Israel is always a type of children of God or Christians. Right. Amen? Amen? 
That's God speaking. Old Testament, New Testament, and this Testament. Right now. Maybe. All right. Any other prayer requests? We want to, we want to, because God is answering our prayers. We thank God for that little baby. I mean, I remember hearing Pastor Scott say, we're going to, he said, I pray that, that they'll uh, do a test and they won't even have to do this surgery. I heard it come out of his mouth. I said, I agree with that. Now, I've prayed some of those things and they've not worked, but you know what? Praise God. That one's worth praying every time. Is it not? Yes. One little baby. God's moving. God's working. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, Sister Lisa. Can you remember Chandler and Uncle Keith Campbell? Yes. Fell from a tree stand and broke his back. Yes. And, uh, he's on the other prayer list, but I want to go ahead and write this down. I like to put these names. He's paralyzed from the, from the waist down. <laughs> he has to go to Atlanta for rehab. Okay. We're believing God that he will be restored. Yeah. That he'll be up and walking. He's we, got four kids. That's Chandler's uncle, right? Amen. God knows who it is. Amen. Anybody else? I've got a couple. Uh, remember my nephew Brandon, first of all, salvation, was in the, the homosexual spirit, but he got real sick, of course, blood work from what praise God. Nothing shows, AIDS, HIV, any of that. So now we've got to start with the we had to do a family history of cancer and sickness and all that. Okay. So, but um, we got a call last night. His older, oldest brother's ex-wife, they were having a bonfire and a flame chased and burned. And I don't know something about light and fire. Anyway, she is in Gainesville at the burn center and they're not sure yet. And that's her name is Elizabeth. Okay. Boy, I tell you what, if you've ever burnt yourself pretty bad, and Brother uh, Willie can attest, I mean, it was bam, quick, burn, instant. But Jesus touched him. I'm telling you what, he can heal us. Amen. One touch from Jesus. You know, I, I don't want to go to hell. I'm telling you what, I've had enough of that. Uh, I burnt myself two or three times, and I, I, I don't want to die. I burnt myself really bad. Yes. Praise God. We prayed for that. That's what we prayed. There'd be no scholars. Amen. You know, that's a good reminder. Not that it's good for that to happen to us. But it's a good reminder. Get some heat to us every now and then. Huh? And get you praying, won't The Lord knows how to turn up the heat even in an accident. I'm not saying it was God. I'm not saying it's the devil. But the Lord knows how to remind us, don't he? I know I need it. Well, that's what the Bible says. Put yourself in remembrance of these things. Amen. Amen. Anybody else? Rather, I'm talking about where the Lord out of the church. I said, those ones that I feel that's God. I don't have. Yes. So we need the door open. Right. Right. Yeah. Praise God for that. We're believing for an open door and freedom. We, you know, uh, that's just the will of God, brother. You know, just because you got good and bad, you always have somebody, you know, one bad apple try to spoil it for the whole bunch, but we're not going to allow that. Just like, sure, there's a lot of uh, these priests have been accused of, and a lot of them was done. But a lot of them have not done. But I'm a pastor. And that, you know, because they tell me, don't touch no little kids, don't even touch them. Listen, I'm going to pat my brother Brandon, uh, Brayden on the head, right, brother? Huh? And I'm going to love him because real men love Jesus and love each other. And ain't nothing wrong with that. Right. Amen? That's right. Hey, but I'm not going to walk in fear. But now we're going to do it in the right way, in the right spirit. Amen? Mm -hmm. Which is it? Brayden? Brayden. Yeah. For some reason, I always want to say Brandon. We do have a Brandon that comes. Is that his name, Brandon? Yeah. Black-haired guy? Okay. Yeah. 
But me and Brady, we've been studying about the Wolverines and uh, learning a lot of stuff. You know, it, uh, the Lord speaks to us even through the eagles. He'll speak to us through anything if we'll pay attention. Amen? But I asked Brady, I said, do you love Jesus? Have you asked Jesus in your heart? He said, yeah. I said, that's the main thing, is it not? And we keep speaking that, keep speaking that. And just, I'm not going to say crown, but you know, if, was it Wednesday night I shared the story about compelled and hog tied, or was that last Sunday? That was Wednesday. That was Wednesday night. I'm telling you what, I might, we'll have to tell that story. That's, it's a true story. Uh, it, it, in other words, uh, sometimes we're a little bit too timid sharing things about the Lord. You say, well, don't push it. Well, actually the word compelled, it means push, push Jesus, whether they want to hear it or not. Right, right. Now let's don't be mean-spirited. Let's be in the right spirit. Love, not religious, or better than that. We've got to have our heart right. But we're not going to back down from sharing about Jesus Christ. Amen? Okay. Uh, anybody else? Hallelujah. You know, I, I, I just, uh, I'm tired of the devil trying to steal from God's people. Amen? They've accused me of that. Yes. As Phil just told me that uh, we need to remember Kel, to remember David's little friend that came to yes. the Yes. Yes. Uh, going through some, that, that boy don't have a chance, really. <laughs> it's sad. That's what we're just talking about. Not this. His, his family life. In the natural, it's just, yeah. They're Gail's neighbor. She sees and knows. Yes, and that's what. Uh, uh, Carol and uh, my Memo Nadine, they had seen a lot of just. But you know what? There's got to be angels. And we're praying, Lord, stir up the angels to help those kids in the midst of a mess. Yeah. Yeah. God knows, all right? Let's keep praying. We're not going to quit, amen? Yes, pray. Well, that's, he sounded really bad, but he was praying. Yeah. Well, I was praying. He opened the door for the car is moving. It's bad. It's that's right, so we need to pray for him. Amen. Amen. That's right. Mm -hmm. Any request we need to bring to the Lord. Let's get used to praying and bringing our troubles and people that's on our heart to the Lord. Amen. And the yes. Lord hears your prayers just the same as everybody else. That's right. Did you hear that? Yes. Yes. Right? yes. Is a uh, okay. And my stepfather. Oh, I got you. But now when we pray. Even though pastor leads or whomever leads, at the end, we all want to say amen. If we uh, listen and agree what's being prayed, pray, that means you just pray and seal the covenant in prayer. This stuff is powerful. Amen? Amen. We say amen. That means I agree with that prayer. Amen? All right. See? Sister Carol. Angie's where she works at Brookhaven. Yes. They had a fire in there. Yes. Uh, somebody was smoking mm. and threw the cigarettes in the waste basket. It caught on fire. And uh, the curtain, in that one room, the curtains caught on fire and everything. The fire this is one of the patients. The fire department was there and they're investigating it now who threw the cigarette in the trash can. And this lady was in there, this little lady, and she says she sees angels. And uh, she tells everybody when they come in, I, don't you see them sitting there? And they, they said, no. Uh, you know, bless their hearts. Uh, I agree, they shouldn't smoke in the rooms. My daddy and him, when he was up there, they had their little place out there to smoke. Boy, there's some good people there, you know? Who knows, could have been a worker. Right. Sneaking yeah. a few puffs. They're investigating it. And, and I'm like, yes, good Lord, let them have some liberties, but... Everybody needs to follow the rules, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, we also got to see our grandson Matthew on Friday. He had some national people living in a group home to use the village to put in like seven other kids, like family type thing. And he's doing as well as he is in schools and to. Um, Good reports and everything. Yeah, uh, Praise God. Praise God. Romans 8, 28 says all things work together for good. It didn't say all things are good. We know they're not. All things work 
together for good to them who are the called according to God's purpose. We just have to line back up. That's what happened to me in prison. I lined up real quick. Didn't take it long. Amen. Amen. Got my heart right. It's like that movie Cool Hand Luke. What we have here is a failure to communicate. Well, I got some communication. Amen. And we're praying that humility be worked out. You know, yeah, I call it getting. You just got the kids like David, my brother's boy. You just got to get it. I mean, it's uh, learn responsibility. There's uh, for every action, there's a reaction, and there are consequences. You know, it's called growing up. But you just got to get it. Uh, so, we believe Matthew's got it, and he is keeping it. Amen. Amen. Walking it out. We claim a good report that it will be out. Amen. <clears throat> My brother, God's working on him. He told me yesterday, he said, now, I'm going to try to be there in the morning. I'm just kind of expecting to walk in any time. But, I'm going to keep believing. God's dealing with his heart, see. Amen. He's dealing with it. Out of the blue, he said, I said, well, okay. I'll see you tomorrow then. I didn't push you. You know, now, every now and then, I will say something to him, but I, I got to be extraordinarily led of the Lord because I've already pushed it and pushed it and pushed it. I'm going to continue, but once we've pushed it and said it and they know how we feel, let's don't get in the flesh and beat it in the ground. Let's just don't get in the flesh. Let's speak it in love. We're not backing down off of it, but we're not going to get religious about it. We got to trust the Holy Spirit to move with our words and actions. Because if He can't do it, we sure can't. He can, but He has to have their will to work with. We understand that. But He knows how, better than we, to get their heart to where they get it. Amen. All right. Anybody else? Thank you, Pastor. Anybody? Yes, Sister Carol. Uh, my mom, she's 94, and she's just. That's awesome. She just got saved. She accepted Jesus into her heart. Amen. Um, Praise God! Have 94! Amen. Hallelujah! Boy, don't get any better than that. That's awesome, isn't it? It's all by grace. Whether 9 or 99, it's all by grace. Hallelujah! We've got to rejoice at anybody getting saved. Okay. If you think of any other requests, and you, while we're praying, just just bring them up to the Lord. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. I'm going to uh, lay this out here. Uh, let's don't forget this lady. Uh, CNN is prophesying. Our spirit filled sister. Amen. Could be. Amen. For for the the glory of God for the church. Amen. Hallelujah. I like that. Could be the pivotal. Person. No, no, no. Obey the Lord. Obey the Lord, sister. Mamma's not here. Can everybody hear? When I do this, I want everybody to hear. That's all I'm trying to do. I pray that the Lord will give us the church as Christians, individuals, however you want to put it, the strength and courage to stand up like this woman did. She did this in front of our government leaders. Can we even do this in front of somebody that's in the grocery store or at Walmart or wherever? Amen. Like, we're the state here. Act 2, 17 through 21. And it shall come to pass on the last day, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall see dreams. And yes. all my servants and all my handmaidens I will pour out in those days of my spirit. They shall prophesy, and I will show waters in heaven above, and signs in the earth beneath. Blood and fire and vapor of smoke, the sun shall be turned into darkness, the moon into blood, therefore that great and notable day of the Lord come, and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. In it's my coming. heart, I, I feel, I don't know if anybody else does think about that, that woman just I think that's a sign, amen. It's a sign and a wonder. The Bible says tons are for the unbeliever, did it not? Yeah. Yeah. 
I agree. I think that's sign saying, not long. Get ready. You know, some of these people are not just nuts out there wearing these signs that says, repent for the end is near. Now, I know people have laughed. But I believe some of them probably trying to get attention. But just like there's good cop, bad cop, good judge, bad judge, good preacher, bad preacher, good doctor, bad doctor, good bad, and all of them. But I believe some of them obey the Lord. Because it, the time of the Gentile church and the grace age as we know it is going to shut down. And then it's basically all going to be centered around Israel. Yes. It's happening. As we see Israel is in the center of everything right now almost. That's why Russia and China is all fighting over just that one little piece of ground right there. All in that area. It's all rich. I'm talking about Iraq, Iran, all of the uh, Lebanon, all those countries right there, but especially Israel. It's spiritual. We've got a good God and the devil is the enemy. It's Isaac fighting Ishmael. It's exactly what the Bible has said. Amen. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer and we'll open up. Yes, sir. The lady that we're talking about was the stenographer for Congress. And she's been there the whole time writing down everything that she's hearing from all these people. For years, right? So she's known what's going on. And finally God moved upon her to let, know, know, let the people know. That's interesting. God's got a people. He's got them everywhere. Somebody filled with the Holy Ghost, God has got in every uh, important position or place every government, I believe, on the face of the earth. God's got a people. That's yeah. what they said some of them didn't vote. I said, that's the one that was Pentecostal so we're getting out of here. <laughs> 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 they said, it's a coming down and I'm out of here. Stay close. Let's go. Praise God. Somebody stand it up. Amen. Amen. Well, where she was sitting, I've spoken tongues right there. Charles Taylor, he was the equivalent of Jimmy Quillen, the representative down in North Carolina in that district right in there next to the Georgia border in Hayesville. Invited me up to come to the uh, D.C. And, and the Lord worked it out where we could get up there. I went to his office and then we went underground where all the presidents walked in case there was a nuclear activity or whatever. Uh, Kennedy walked through there and then walked up into the Capitol building. And uh, I was speaking in tongues the whole time. I was surprised. I said, wherever I go, Lord, I'm speaking. I've spoken tongues at the Washington Monument, the Lincoln Memorial, the Jefferson Memorial. I was speaking in tongues. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I was pleading the blood of Jesus over our nation. And I said, I'm going to keep on pleading the blood. This land was bought and purchased by the blood of the patriots that was in connection to the blood of Jesus. Amen. Bought and paid for by Jesus Christ. They're fighting the very thing that loves them. Amen. Amen. Well, glory to God. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Amen. Amen. Father, in Jesus' name, you heard our hearts. You said you desired a house of prayer. Lord, we're not trying to get religious or fancy, but we want to be right and in agreement with your word to petition you, number one, with respect and reverence, your Almighty God. The only way that we can come to you is in the name of Jesus, in the Spirit, in the love of the blood of Jesus. Lord, we ask you to touch every request. Move according to your will. Save, heal, deliver, do miracles. Signs and wonders. We see them. We read them. We acknowledge you are Lord of all. Not our government. Not any government of the world, but the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord of glory, the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. Jesus, you are Lord. And we plead your blood by grace through faith for miracles. We ask you to touch that lady, whatever her name is, and strengthen her, encourage her to keep standing. Let it stir some others up to come out. 
and say we are believers, spirit-filled believers. The Lord, touch every request. Father God, thank you that you hear our prayer. We're going to all say amen, Lord, according to salvation, healing, and deliverance, according to your word, we agree for these miracles to take place. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody say it. Amen. amen. All right. Hallelujah. Hey, Brady, did you say amen? amen. Can I get an amen? <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Got, can I get an amen? Amen. All right. Glory to God. Amen. <laughs> Give the Lord a hand of praise, everybody. I tell you what, we need to say amen. Now, I'm not saying you have to be loud and act like me, but you know what? There's power in those words. <laughs> We're releasing our faith. If, we, if our heart's not in it, then it's just a religious thing, right? But if you, in other words, if you mean it, you're releasing power. It works. Okay, are you at 40? Uh, Ezekiel chapter 46, verses 9 and 10. Now I'm going to read, I, made, I wrote it down on one of my cards. I'm reading from the message. Again, I read many, many kinds of uh, uh, translations. But I just like the way that this was written out. I like the NIV. I like the New King James. Generally, I preach out of the New King James. I did all my memorization out of King James. And I do not have this memorized. But I want you to read from whatever translation you've got. And let's get the interpret or the spirit of what God is saying. I was going to tell you the message. And the title of what God gave me is called Change. A fact of life. Deal with it. Now we want to deal with change God's way. Amen. And I'll jump ahead and we're going to study a word in the New Testament. Change is metamorpho, which is where we get our word metamorphosis, which means to be transformed, transfigured. It means to change. So we want to change according to the Word of God, not according to the ways of the world. Amen. Now God is not the one that needs to change. He said, I'm God and I change not. When you're right, when you're God, you can not change. Amen? But we're the ones who got to change. Because we were born in the flesh, born into sin. We got born again. Amen? Yeah. And we need to constantly be renewing our minds and being transformed or transfigured into the image of Christ. We actually want to act like Christ or Christians. Amen? That's the whole point. Okay, Ezekiel 46, 9 and 10. Now, don't get me wrong. I read some out of let me back up. I read some out of the message. I read some out of the NIV and even the King James. And I don't like the translations. I think it's beautiful. I don't think there's any perfect one. I think they're all perfect in spirit. What God is trying to say, okay? Trying to get it through our thick heads and into our hearts. The essence or the spirit of what He's saying. That's what we want. Amen. I, mean, I don't care about the these and the thous or the yous and the me's or the taters or the laters. We want the spirit of what he's saying. Amen? Right. Hallelujah. So, that, so I just, I read this and I thought, man, that's good. All right. Ezekiel 46, 9 and 10. But when the people of the land come to worship God, amen, that's us. We're the people of the land coming to worship God. Of course, this is the Old Testament. I realize that. And they're talking about Old Testament feasts. We, every, every time we come to church, it should be a feast, a celebration. Amen? All right. But when the people of the land come to worship God at the commanded feasts, those who enter through the north gate will exit from the south gate. And those who enter from the south gate will exit from the north gate. You don't exit the gate through which you enter, but through the opposite gate. Okay? That's pretty plain in any translation, right? Can we get that? I don't care how you say it. Don't go in the same way you... Don't go out the same way you come in. Let me say that again. Don't go out the same way you come in. Now, that's in the natural. And the spiritual message is we want to be changed when we go to church. Now, we sometimes cannot measure the change in us. Bottom line, if you're lost and you get saved, there's got to be a change. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. 
a new creation. It means a species of man or woman that's never been before. You didn't get done over. You got born again. You come into existence right with God like you've never been before. Okay? Now, it's you're still the same person in one sense. The essence of who you are is the same, but you've never been born again. And when you're born again, it's a transformation of the Spirit. You're a new, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. You were full of sin, and then you become full of righteousness. It's mystical. It's magical in the true way. See, the devil's tried to steal both of those words. It is a mystical, wonderful, glorious metamorphosis when we're born again. Okay, that's the change, the number one change. <laughs> when we come into the presence of God, now I'm not talking about just this building here, okay? That's not the church. We're the church when we get together. Okay, let's read on. And then it says, but through the opposite gate, the prince is to be there mingling with them, going in and out with them. In other words, and this is, I'm going to refer to a couple of my notes. It's the same for all. The ground is level at the foot of the cross. Rich, poor, old, young, male, female, Jew, Gentile, royalty, commoner, intelligent, ignorant, Pauls and Peters, people and princes. God's commandment is the same for everybody, no matter who you are. He's commanded us to repent, get saved, be born again. I don't care who you are, what denomination you're in. If you're not born again, you're not going to heaven. If you're not saved, you're not going to heaven. If you are, then there must be a change. You don't go out the same way you come in. Okay, that's for the original born again position, and it's also our, should be our attitude now. I want to have some more change in my life. I want to be more godlike. That's our goal. Paul said, I die daily. Jesus said, take up your cross every day. Amen. Deny yourself. Come and follow me. It's a daily decision, right? We are all slash were sinners in the need of a Savior. Amen. The key is, have we had the personal visitation of Jesus Christ? Not just going in the north gate and coming out the south gate. If you come in that door, go out that door. It's not talking of physical things. See, the Jews think it's a physical thing. In other words, if I'm part of the lineage, they some of them, they're documenting hair samples, DNA, and everything to trace, to make sure they got enough Jewish blood in them to be saved. I mean, you talk about nitty-gritty. Those rabbis, I, I would hate to have been a uh, or hate to have been or even be a rabbi in the flesh. I am a rabbi in the spirit. Rabbi simply means teacher. But those Jewish rabbis, but they were practically doctors. And if it wasn't fleshly perfected, you know, keep the race. See, that's where the false prejudice of not mixing races come from. See, we're not to mix spiritual races with the world, right? But you know, it doesn't matter if the black marriage are white, or red marriage are white, or China, yellow marriage are uh, whatever. That's not what he said to, to not do. He said, don't be unequally yoked together with unbelievers because whose presence you're in, or what you agree with, or disagree with, can hurt you. Well, that's what happened to Solomon. He had 300 wives and 700 concubines, and he took on false religion. And I don't know if he got saved or not. He might have had before he died, but he was backslid for part of even in the Scriptures tells him. That's why he said don't mix with those nations. Okay? But we're not talking physical. We've got to go with the spiritual thing. We are not Jews who've been circumcised of the flesh. We're Jews who circumcised of the Spirit. That's being born again. You've got the mark of God on your heart by the blood of the Lamb. Now, I know I'm getting in a little bit deep there. Let me just read this right here. The cross of the Christian. And this is, we're, we're talking about change. Maybe I'm getting a little ahead of myself. But 
Let's talk about the change of parents and actually us. Like say legislating laws and trying to get people to do good before they've been born again. Let me just read this thing. The cross of the Christian is to teach their children to do good and to be Christ-like before they're born again or before they're saved. Right? We're teaching our children to do right. We surely cannot teach them to do evil. But to be honest and to teach them that true goodness comes from being born again. In other words, why am I trying to teach you to do good is so that you can know what is right, what is wrong, and how you miss the mark. And so that it'll, like the law will point to us the need of a Savior. We, all, we can't do perfection. Why are we teaching our children? We want them to be perfect or to try to get them to do good so that they can see the need that Christ is the only one that can cause us to be perfect and help us to do good. It's kind of... Because if you're not careful, because I've seen preachers' kids, you know, think they're saved because they've been in church all their life. But you got to have they got to have that personal relationship too. The princes and the paupers, no matter who it is, you come in one gate, you got to go out the other. You you got to come to Jesus, and you got to be changed, you got to be born again, right? We're getting that established, Amen. And that's pretty hard sometimes to teach our children. You know, we get frustrated because. I believe some is just born with a little more rebellious nature than others. I was the black sheep of the family. And it's because, I mean, we've all got the nature in us. And we who are born again have tried, and they all are doing, and, and sometimes we're more successful than others to crucify the flesh, to break it, to kill it, to deny it, to walk in the spirit, right? Some of us have more trouble than others at different areas and issues of life. But even before children come to Jesus, <laughs> you have some, and we get so frustrated, but you know, sometimes we've got to understand, they're not born again. And so, they don't have the Spirit of God in because once you're born again, uh, you receive the Spirit of God. Bam! Automatically. When you receive Jesus, actually you're not receiving Jesus, you're receiving the Spirit of Jesus. And then you're receiving the Holy Ghost. You're getting saved. Amen? Because Jesus is on the right hand of the Father. He's up in heaven. Jesus literally does not physically come and walk in our body. But His Spirit does. Which is the same exact thing. He said, I and my Father are one. They're, they're the same. Amen? It's God coming in. And if God doesn't come in, you ain't got God. If He comes in, His nature, and it's like what Miss Elisa was saying a couple of weeks ago. She was sharing about this Indian granddad is trying to teach a kid, you know, you've got two people in you, or two animals in you, you know, a wolf and a lamb, which is describing the two natures we have, right? Even after you're born again. This is a kid, well, you don't have it till you're born again. You don't have the lamb in you till you're born again. Then you've got two natures, right? Nature of the spirit and nature of the flesh. And even Galatians 5 tells us it names all the works of the flesh and names all the works of the spirit. Just like I teach about he says, you know, it hurts when I do this. Bam! Well, don't do that. You know, walking in the flesh. Stop it. Don't do it. How do I walk in the Spirit? Oh, what am I supposed to well, Love, joy, peace. You know, if it's love, joy, peace, walk in that. Well, the granddad, you know, the kid said, well, how, which one's going to win? He said, the one you feed the most, right? So, uh, I know I got frustrated with my kids because I expected them. You know, we, we, we should expect a lot out of our children because we feed them physically, we feed them spiritually, we teach them, and we, we want what's best for them because we love them just like God. He's saying, like Job said, look down there at my kid, the devil. The devil said, oh, he won't serve you. He just served you because you're getting good things. The Lord said, tell you what, take anything from him. Don't take his life. Don't touch his life. And he said he'll still serve you. And he did and so, God said, that's my kid. I want the best for him. Right? <clears throat> Actually, the devil has a right to tempt us, to test us, and to try us. But he does not, have, does not have the authority to rule over us. Right? If we exercise our authority, Jesus Christ, the Word of God, over him. Now, that's the change that we've got to have. And it only comes from being in the presence of God. I want to make this little statement here. I wrote it down. Any place that I've ever been, I've always wanted to leave it better than I found it. 
I'm talking about, like, say, houses I've rented, churches I've been in, people I've been with, or a job I've had. Any place or any person I've ever been with, I've always wanted to leave them better than I found them. There's probably one person, my ex-wife, she, she'll probably tell you I didn't leave them better. But, but I try to leave, you know, that's... A lot of people say, oh, Lord, now you're not even a real preacher because you've been married before or whatever. Well, praise the Lord. I ain't going to dignify that with an answer. The blood of Jesus cleanses all sin, does he not? Amen. No matter what it is. But I have tried to leave everybody better. And I'm, I'm not trying to, if she sees the internet thing, I'm not trying to put her down. The bottom line is this. I have been changed by being in the presence of God and I want to help change someone else. I want to change circumstances, situations. When I was in prison, I was in there for drug addiction and being a thief. But you know what? After so many months, I actually got to hand out the medicines. Now that is change, is it not? Yes. From being the big druggie to the one that's guarding them and making sure nobody steals them and gets this and that. Now I didn't have full you know, rule over it, but they let me do that. I mean, help organize it and count them out and this and that. I mean, that's change, is it not? And it only come because of the presence of God. Okay, go with me to Romans chapter 12. I alluded to it just a moment ago and read that. And... Uh, go from there. I make a few notes... I generally don't, I don't, I've never written out a sermon, but I do make a few notes on a couple things that, well, some of the things that I know the Lord wants me to hit, and then He still has to bring it out, or it's not going to get done. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. And we're talking about going in one door, sticking with the, the text, and going out another. In other words, we want to be changed. And that fits for lost, saved people, right? But it fits young people, old people. It fits us as good Christians wanting to get to be better Christians, right? This is for us. And the change only comes about from the presence of the Lord. Now, this is what I love. Jesus said, where two or three are gathered together, there am I in the midst of them. Okay? Now, if our heart is right... And we're meeting for the right reasons. Jesus is here. Okay? Your heart's right, my heart's right, so Jesus is here. And so we've got legal precedent to believe for and to expect change. Supernatural change from being in the presence of God. Because you're going to be like who you're around. You will. The strongest one will rub off on the weakest one. That's true. Amen? Whether you try it or not, whether you believe it, it doesn't matter. It's a fact. It's a rule. It's a law. That's why the Lord said, come out from amongst them. Be ye separate. Separate from the spirit of the world. That's why we're guarding our mind, guarding our lives. That's why we have a, you know, a remote control to cut off the bad and to guard what we look at and what we hear. The gates that goes to our heart. Lord, put a guard on my heart, a guard on my mouth, a guard on my eyes, and a guard on my ear. Because I only want that, the Bible says, to meditate and think on that which is lovely, good report. And I'm not saying I've got a Lord, have a King James Version Bible before my face ever walk around. Right. I like to watch good TV shows, good, excuse me, good clean moral message about life. Sometimes a, a messy message, but it's speaking truth and it's done in a, a good way. Why? Because I want. I want that which is good and edifying and healthy so I can change in the right way and, and it actually enjoy even the right kind of entertainment because I need, we all need refreshing and renewing spiritually and mentally, intellectually. Amen. I, I even like my pocketbook to get some refreshing. Amen. Hallelujah. We like change. Boy, that's a, a pun, isn't it? I like change in my pocket. Hallelujah. Glory. Romans 12, 1 says, I beseech you. Paul said, I beg you. Therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies 
a living sacrifice, totally acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. See, right now, you're presenting your body, because your body probably didn't want to be presented this morning. You know, we had to wash it, and comb it, and crimp it, and you know, the body don't feel real good. We love to sleep in, amen. Oh man, I even set the alarm clock this morning, and and I, most of the time, nine times out of ten, I'm up for the lot. But this morning, I mean, the alarm clock went off. I was sound asleep. And I'd just about give a $50 bill for another 20 minutes of sleep. But I couldn't do it. I had to get up. And I said, praise the Lord. i got to be changed. i gotta, I got to get up. i got to sacrifice my body. Amen. I mean, literally, that's what we're doing. To come in the presence of God. Not to say our denomination is the only one with the presence of God. Where two or three are gathered together in the name of Jesus, Jesus is there and that's the church. Amen? That's the government of God and that's good enough for me. Then he says, don't be conformed to this world but be you transformed. There's that Greek word. I wrote it down from Strong's conformed. Excuse me, transformed. It's from word uh, 4832. Anyway, it means to be transformed. Excuse me. It means to change or be transfigured. Now, you know, the Bible talks about the mountain of transfiguration. You know, when Jesus with Moses and Elijah appeared before Peter, James, and John, three of the disciples. Moses and Elijah represented the law of the prophets. Actually, by the way, Moses did get to go into the promised land. You remember when he was in the natural state, God said, you know, because you rebelled, you got angry. And, uh, hey, I got angry too, but you didn't <coughs> obey me. And that's why it's, it's good to anger, but sin not, right? Be slow to anger. God's the only one who can control his anger. We can't. That's why he said be slow to anger. That's why he said anger and sin not. Be very careful. So Moses messed up and he couldn't go into the promised land. Right? The Bible said God took him. God buried him. His body. Physical body. His bones are still over there. But God, in the spirit he went to heaven. Right? Because the Bible says be absent from the body. to be present with the Lord. I don't think that's so hard to figure out. Doctrinally. Amen? You, you are not your body. We just live in the body. We are a spirit. God is a spirit. We are a spirit. And we live in the body. And one day God's going to take and make us a glorified body that can handle eternal life and the glory of God. Amen? But Moses, come back with Jesus. Elijah, Moses, and Jesus. And you've got to admire old Peter. He said, you know, let's build us a tent. Man, this is good. I'm sure the glory of God was getting on him and he was liking it. I mean, hallelujah. The pre There's nothing like the presence of God. Now, God is always present, but He doesn't always manifest Himself. See, I am after, we are after the more manifest presence of God that we can get. Amen? Now, the bottom line is, by faith, He's here. Now, I've got a witness in my spirit that He didn't lie in that Bible. Amen? He's here with us right now. And on occasion, I'll feel that manifestation. I mean, especially when I'm a preacher. I, my back don't hurt. Amen. My joints don't ache. I got the manifestation of the glory of God in me. Hallelujah. And I like it. The Bible says they addicted themselves to the ministry of the Word of God. They addicted themselves to the glory of God. They addicted themselves to the transforming power, the changing power of the presence of God. There's nothing like it. I guarantee, Brother Larry, I'll tell you, there's nothing like heaven. That's the most manifest presence of God you can get. That's why I don't feel sorry for nobody in heaven. Amen. I want to go there. I, I, I mean, you know, I'm not in any hurry. I want to live life here, but I've got to feel it. And I've tasted enough of God where the Apostle Paul said, man, if you want to get down to it, I'd really rather go on. There's been many times in my life I said, Lord, I just like to just go on being heaven. Amen. You can take care of the mess down here. God will raise all kinds of preachers up. Amen. He said, that's okay, son. Don't get in a hurry. It'll come. Don't worry about it. Just keep obeying me. Amen. There's nothing like the presence of God. Just, to, you know, for the Lord to touch you and the Lord to bless you when you know that you know that you know I'm saved. 
Even though we're not perfect yet, in the Spirit we're perfect, and He's working on the rest of it. In other words, we're not working to be saved. We're working because we are saved. Amen. Amen. Again, that's attitude of heart, and that's what Jesus said the kingdom of God is in your heart. Okay, 